Hey, Scott. How are you? How are you doing, Jillian? I'm fine. I'm blessed and highly favored. I'm happy to be back on your lovely platform. And I'm good. I'm yeah. good. Yeah. yeah, we love having you on. It's been a while. It's been a while. So a lot's been going on with you. Yes. I don't know how <laughs> open you want to get with everything. Everything. Kind of, okay, let's, yeah. let's just open it up. Yeah, because you, okay, you've been going through a lot right now. So maybe let's start with that. And okay. anything you don't want me to talk about, I can cut out or whatever. Absolutely. But yeah, yeah, so first of all, I'm sorry about your mom because I've seen this in your stories every day. Yes. So I can't ignore this. Like, I'm so sorry. You guys were so close. Very close. So how have you been handling this? And like any advice for anybody out there, has this grief made you sort of like want to fall off the wagon and get away from the plant-based and being healthy or how have you been navigating all that? That's a great question. With this newfound grief of the transition, I don't want to say death. I'll say transition of my mother. I've had my ups. I've had my downs. Some days are better than the other days. But one thing that always keep me afloat is the way my mother was so happy when I were doing things that would make her smile. My mother loved it when I would talk about health and wellness. My mother loved it when I talk about my content creation journey. My mother loved it when I would host, you know, host with Vegan Dale and just do those very positive things, especially when I talk about like working now and anything like that. She was just a big supporter of anything and everything that I do. So even though I have my ups and downs, I have it in my head that in order for me to continue to, to honor my mother's legacy and honor her life, I need to continue doing the things that made her smile while she was here on this physical earth. I love that. Thank God. It's so yes. good because it would be easy to just go the other way because I know a lot of people, it's obviously like one of the hardest things you can deal with in life, losing your parents, right? Yes. And especially at a younger age, at any age. Any but, age. And I think that would, those times that are so hard are the most tempting to start drinking again, doing drugs, Ooh, the food. Yeah. yeah. Let, me, let me get more into that because my mother was a woman of honor. My mother was a woman of integrity. And of course, those options were there. I could fall off the bandwagon. I could start eating non-vegan. I could start smoking and drinking alcohol and everybody grief different. So I will never judge a human being on how they deal with grief. But I know that my mother wouldn't be happy if I started to use drugs, if I started to abuse alcohol, if I started to fall off and eat fried foods, processed foods, non-vegan foods and foods that are not healthy and foods that will literally consume my soul. So there's a level of accountability here. I need to continue doing the things that made my mother happy, that made me happy as well too, and not make her be, be sad and frown upon when she's in the next transitional phase of her life. I don't feel like we just die and just go away. I me feel too. like we transition into a higher power. We transition into a higher state of being. So even though she's not here in the physical, she is here watching me in the spiritual. I'll tell you this, right? So during the grief of my mother, probably like whew, the first week or second week, I was really going through it. I was going through a time where I, I felt like I wanted to isolate myself from people. And I felt like I wanted to just dig deep into the depression and dig deep into whatever it is I was feeling. I wasn't working out. I was eating, I was eating very well. It's not like I fall off the vegan wagon, but I wasn't working out. I wasn't as, mm -hmm. you know, happy go lucky Scott. I wasn't um very sociable around the time, you know. And <laughs> I kid you not, my mother came to me in my dream and she says, son, do not worry about me. I'm in a better place. I need you to start working out again. I need you to start bettering yourself. I need you to start getting ready for all these things that are coming in front of you. Like I had to host Vegan Dale. I did three Vegan Dale events in one month. I just came back fresh off of Jamaica doing my wellness retreat, my second wellness retreat. Yeah. Both of them sold out. So literally when my mother came into my dream, and told me these things, and it was speaking life into me, even while she's not here in the physical, it made me accountable. And it made me say, okay, I need to get up and I need to continue honoring my mother's legacy while I'm building my very own. 
And maybe you'll go even higher. Yes. Wow, I love that. You know, that's common. That happened with my grandmother coming into my dreams. And you hear that happen oft, happening often when people pass away, loved mm -hmm. ones close to us coming in the dreams like that. So mm -hmm. I do believe like they're on the other side. Yeah. And good for you. I'm glad you're handling it as well as you can. And I think the plant foods, the healthy foods, staying yes. your healthiest, getting back to working out, like that makes it so much easier to deal with too, right? Absolutely. It just makes whatever you're dealing with in life easier. It makes you your best self, don't you feel like? Absolutely. I would say my, I give a lot of credit to the morals, the wisdom, the encouragement, the love, everything you could think of. I give it all to my mother because if it was for my mother instilling discipline in me, I will fall off the bandwagon very easily, just as many has fall off. And I'm not here to judge anyone, but that is the reality when it comes to grief, when it comes to strife, when it comes to hard times. But because of my disciplinary mindset that my mother instilled in me, even though I felt like I need to, I wanted to fall off the bandwagon, I get right back up mm -hmm. because I know what I have to do in this in this time. Yeah. And did she have a similar lifestyle too? Like, was she really health conscious too? So my mother was health conscious, but I will say that my mother became, I don't want to say the word victim. I'm going to use my words very wisely because my mother was a nurse. So she was in that field. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to being in that field, certain things get rejected and then you want to lean more onto Western medicine and, and things of that nature. Um, but she was very, she was health conscious, but she was a, like an old school Jamaican lady, you know, she liked what she liked. And yeah. I would try, you know, very hard to introduce her to certain things like, Hey mom, I'm raw vegan fasting. That means I'm not eating any cooked food. You should join me. <laughs> you know, trying to make it fun for her. Yeah. And, um, she, sometimes she will indulge. And sometimes she wouldn't indulge, but the times that she indulged were the best times. I'm going to reveal something to you that's very near and dear to me. So when I visited my mother in the nursing home, because my mother got readmitted from the hospital to a nursing home, she had developed blood clots in her body. The, I was there at the nursing home. I was there catering to her, making her smile, making jokes. I was feeding her some tea and we were just talking about, you know, all these things in the past and, you know, wonderful stories. The last request of my mother before she transitioned, before while she was conscious, because I was there on a Wednesday, my mother transitioned Friday, uh, August 23rd, 424 AM. The last oh, August 23rd, my birthday. Wow. wow. Yes. That was yeah. My, yeah, my mother transition date. My mother said this request, Scott, can you juice me some watermelon juice and bring it to me tomorrow? I love when you do those things. Oh, I love that. I am, you should have seen the smile that I had on my face when she told me she wanted watermelon juice yeah. instead of, you know, soda yeah. or something like, you know, and I had such a huge smile on my face. I'll never forget it. And I was like, sure, mommy, I'll be, you, you want a gallon? You want the whole watermelon? Yeah. And I was like, is there somewhere we can keep it? Is there a fridge? Because I'm so, I'm so excited to deliver this to my mother. Thursday comes. I have the watermelon. I'm juicing the watermelon. I'm getting ready. I'm, I'm listening to all types of good music. Yeah. I'm in the kitchen. I'm vibing out. I get a call from the nursing, no, actually I called my mother and I texted my mother and I wasn't getting a call or text back. Mm -hmm. So I was thinking, okay, she is probably asleep, you know? Cause I remember when I saw her the other day, she's like, oh, you know, I'm not, I don't have too much energy and everything like that. I was like, okay, mom, it's fine, you know? And then I get a call from the nursing home saying that my mother is lethargic and my mother is unresponsive. We have remitted her to a hospital, a nearby hospital. So in my head, I don't understand yeah. the severity of what's going on because I need to deliver this watermelon juice to my mother and by any means necessary. Yeah. I need to deliver this watermelon juice. I have a mission. I need to complete it. So once I got whim of where the hospital was kept, I had watermelon juice ready, I had pillows ready, I had I was ready to sleep in that hospital, right? And as soon as I came to the hospital, I rushed in the emergency room. As I rushed into the emergency room, I see my mother there laying there, tubes attached to her, and everything. It, it was it was like 
something that you see in a horror movie. Mm. Oh. It's very good text. And 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 I and it didn't compute to me how severe mm-hmm. severe this was, you know, happening in, in real time. Because I'm like, I need to deliver this watermelon juice. You know, so I'm like, okay, as soon as my mother wakes up, gonna we're gonna have some watermelon juice together, everything. Um, time goes by, she's still unresponsive. The the doctors, they're doing whatever they can to do. Um they was doing the CPR, and of course, when you do CPR, there are pros and cons to it. Mm-hmm. My mother was a very thin woman, so while they were doing the CPR, things started to happen, like uh, the ribs broke, and she developed internal Whoa. bleeding. Wow. Yes, during the CPR. No way. Yes, so, From you know. The, doing the CPR? That's yes. crazy. I didn't mm-hmm. know that could happen. Yep, wow. That can happen, and it happened, and the doctors took my family to the side. Oof. The doctors took my family to the side and they told me, um, we keep getting a pulse, but she is suffering from broken ribs, internal bleeding. She's suffering from everything that you can think of in that moment in time. And me and my sister, I love you, Tara. We had to make the decision as her son and daughter to let her go. Yeah. In peace. Wow, Scott. Yeah. 4.24 a.m. I'll never forget it. Well, I'm glad you both had such a good relationship we while did. she was here. You we know, did. And, we did. you know, it's beautiful. And she, she's so proud of you even now and coming to you. So she's still with you. I feel it. Yeah. Feel and I'm it. glad she's been so supportive of your health journey. Yes. Because your health journey has been a huge part of your life, right? Yes, absolutely. And you have more energy than, <laughs> like, I have a lot of energy and I know people thought of energy. <laughs> no one compares to you. Oh, like, man. you were in a different city every other day hosting these vegan deals on stage. Like, so where do you get this energy? Do you think it's the food or do you think you would still be all this energy on standard American diet? Honestly, I really believe it's a combination of things. For one, my way of eating, I'm vegan, strictly vegan, and not just vegan, but I'm like whole plant-based vegan. So I don't eat a lot of processed vegan foods. Like, you know, I really don't. Once in a while, you know, I have a little something, but I'm really into fasting. I'm really into detoxing. Sometimes I go fruitarian. Sometimes I go raw vegan. Um, I stay very hydrated. I keep myself very accountable. I drink no alcohol. I take no drugs. I am literally a machine. And I go to bed at a certain time. Well, I try to very, you know, sometimes there are going to be nights where you can't go, you can't respect the circadian rhythm, but I'm very accountable. When I feel like, okay, I have not been getting efficient sleep for three to four days, oh no, I need to restart my circadian rhythm. So my level of accountability definitely helps with my energy. I'm very passionate what I do. I don't do things just to do it. My mother always told me, son, is either going to put it 100% or don't put it in at all. So her words live through me. Anything that I do, whether I'm hosting, whether I'm creating content, whether I'm hosting retreats, anything that Scott Bernhardt's do is 100% passion. Wow, I love that. So when you see me get on that stage, that's passion. That's passion. And yeah, you're doing what you love. That's so important in life, right? Absolutely, it is. Wow. And if someone's out there and they're not doing what they love, they want to get into doing what they love. Any advice for that? Any advice for how you found like your path and created a life where you're doing what you love and you're so healthy? Yeah, um, my advice would be, first of all, ask yourself, how bad do you want it? Understand that in this lifetime, you need to sacrifice in order for a greater gain. I had to sacrifice in order to get where I'm at. And I'm still going on that journey. I'm still going on that path. But I had to sacrifice. That means I had to sacrifice certain friend groups. I had to sacrifice certain foods. I had to sacrifice certain thinking. I had to sacrifice... uh, certain uh, stimulus that Mm -hmm. used to be in my life, I no longer deal with those things because I need to get to a higher level. I need to get to a higher vibration. So people need to understand the importance of sacrificing and and also asking yourself, how bad do you want it? Yeah, and then you get benefits from that sacrificing though. Don't you agree? It's not just you're sacrificing and your life sucks. You know what I mean? There's major benefits, don't you feel like? Yeah. I, I always tell people, um, especially when it comes to fasting and detoxing. I actually teach fasting and detoxing. You can check out my Facebook group. It's pretty awesome. Mm-hmm. 
that is a sacrifice. Even if you're vegan, you got to sacrifice the fried oyster mushrooms. You got to sacrifice the fried um, Oreos. You got to sacrifice those processed vegan foods and things of that nature because when you sacrifice those things and you start to eat more fruits and vegetables in its raw state, the downloads become more quicker. You become more efficient. You become a well-oiled machine. The joints are going to be uh, lubricated. You're reducing the parasites out of your body. You're reducing inflammation out of your body. And let me say this um, too. Um, shout out to my lovely mother, Dacia Angela Hewitt. When I injured myself and I was in that wheelchair, I remember when my mother came to pick me up from the airport. She came to pick me up and I remember telling her, Mom, I need watermelon, I need blueberries, I need sea moss, I need soursop, I need mango, I need uh, bitters, which is cassava sagrada. I need all of these herbs. I have these herbs, but I need the fruits. And that's how I was able to recover myself in a very fa timely fashion. Mm -hmm. When I had that injury, reduced the inflammation, I was started walking again in a week and a half. My mother was catering to me. My mother was in the kitchen, cutting up the watermelon, making the watermelon juice with the ginger and the sea moss. See, and people would think like you need the protein, you need the chicken and stuff no, to heal, you don't. right? Yeah. That's actually causing more damage. But they would think, especially to heal and repair like that, no. they would think protein, 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 no, right? Oh boy. See, that's the thing. People love to talk about protein, protein, but never the essential minerals. What about your calcium, your magnesium, your, your, your zinc? They never talk about essential minerals. Yeah. And it baffles me. Yeah. Like, okay, you have an injury. And when there's injury, there's inflammation build up. White blood cells are going to one specific area to try to uh, heal it in certain ways. But because of the, the clump, because of the, the oversaturation of the white blood cells, then that's when swelling occurs. Mm -hmm. How are you going to break down the inflammation? Through anti-inflammatory fruits and juices and also herbs as well. I'm a living testament. The doctor looked me in my eye and said, it's gonna take four to six weeks, son. Four to six weeks, uh, uh, Mr. Ofield. I looked him in the face and I said, okay. <laughs> and I smiled. Yeah. I smiled because I knew what I was facing. And once you have the knowledge, you need to apply the knowledge. And once you apply the knowledge, then that's where you get the results. And that's how I got the results. I was able to heal myself in a week and a half. See, that's incredible. And typical would have been four to six weeks, probably for typical. people on like a standard diet, right? Oh, they try to get me on blood thinners. <laughs> oh, wow. Ginger, so use, is, yeah. ginger is the natural blood thinner. And Don't, cayenne. Mm -hmm. Cayenne too. Yeah, cayenne's yes, really good. Yeah, that's the I thing. I love cayenne pepper. Yeah. God, nature gives us everything we need. Everyone Every is just so off track these days, right? Yes. We have turned away from nature for far so long that we are suffering from that turn from the turn away of nature we're suffering mm -hmm. like Jillian remember when I came when I came to the podcast and I said um I'm promoting my wellness retreat in Jamaica yeah well I'm happy to say that because of the success of the first one I did two back to back that's awesome I sold out in August um the, the first retreat that I was promoting sold out and then because of the, the early sellout of August, I said, okay, let's add another one for September 20th to the 23rd. As I'm here on this podcast, I just recently came back from Jamaica yesterday. Yeah, yesterday. Amazing. Yes. I'm glad they're going so well. Yes, it is. Yes, yeah, it and is. you're doing so well. And a lot of people, like, they want to live this lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Like, I even met somebody yesterday at an event. She's like, I want to be high raw, Ooh. but I just have such a hard time because I crave those other foods and oh. then I just can't stay on track. So, like, any keys, because, like, you're a living testament, right? Yes. You're living the life. You're right. vibing high. You're so healthy. You're traveling the world. Like, any keys for people watching to, like, just stay on track? Take control, right? Mm. Stop being a victim and become the victor. People love to victimize themselves way too much on this earth. I used to be one of those people, and this is why I can speak on this from a perspective, the victim perspective to the victor perspective. So stop victimizing yourself. Oh, I can't do this. Oh, I can't do that. Change up your vocabulary. You can do this, and you will do that. Make yourself more accountable. Do research. There's so much knowledge. There's a vast amount of knowledge out here. Instead of you, this, you see this phone right here? 
This is one of the greatest research tools that you can use. Of course, people more old school, they want to look into literature. They want to look into more into books. There is so much information out there. Keep yourself accountable. Once you get the information, what you do? You start to apply the inflammation. The information, I'm sorry. Because yeah. <laughs> you yeah. have to get the information to reduce the inflammation. You know? Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Preach, I love it. Yes. Yeah. So, like I was saying before, stop having the victim mentality. That's huge. That's probably the best thing we can do in life, right? In it's any the best area. Thing. Yeah. And so you used to be like that. You used yes. to act like a victim all the time. So you notice a big oh. change in your life when you start stopped acting like a victim victim? When I started to take accountability for my life, not just health, but for my life. Why am I not in certain positions? Why am I not getting this? Why am I not getting that? It's because something is holding me back. Sometimes you hold yourself back and you don't even know it. Yeah. So how can people realize, like, how can people stop doing that? How mm. can they become a victor and stop being the victim? Like I said before, stop developing that victim mentality. You need to start keeping yourself accountable. The reason why this has happened is because A, B, and C. Matter of fact, the reason why this has happened is because of me. Because I'm too lazy. I don't feel motivated. And because there's no motivation, there will never be no discipline. I'm not disciplined. I don't know what I'm doing. I have lack of knowledge. And once you realize those things, as an example, you realize those things, okay, what is the plan of action in order for you to correct those things? That's what I had to do personally. Okay, the reason why I'm not growing muscles is because I'm not, I don't have a, a, a disciplinary training regiment. The reason why I still have acne on my face or the reason why I'm suffering from eczema and things of that nature because I don't fast and detox. I continue to fill my body with inflammation, with inflammatory foods, fast foods, processed foods. The reason why I don't wake up early in the morning because I go to bed late. Mm -hmm. You All see that? Things. Yeah. And yeah. once you start to realize that, it's like, oh, wow, this is the reason why? Now, what's the plan of action in order to correct that? Yeah, because you can be like, if I created all this and I'm responsible for all this, then I can create the opposite, right? Mm -hmm. And make everything better. Yeah. And how long? You've been vegan for, what, seven, eight years now? Eight years. Yeah, well, and you're feeling good. Like, you don't amazing. miss me and you don't feel I like know. you need me. So if people ask, like, how do you get everything you need? Because some people <sighs> are concerned. Oh, what if you need this, need that? Like, oh, what are your secrets? Let me tell you, man. The Almighty placed everything on this earth for us as far as the fruits, the vegetables, the herbs. See, a lack of knowledge will allow the people to perish. And because people have a lack of knowledge, then they start to say, oh, how am I going to get this? How am I going to get that? If you want to talk about vegan protein, if you want to talk about uh, vegan uh, fats and carbs, because you, I don't think you can live your life just on protein. It's no. called macronutrients, <laughs> yeah. protein, fats, and carbs. Let's get that straight, people. So, okay, you want to talk about protein? Quinoa, kamut, you want to talk about uh, fonio, which I talk about heavy, which is a uh, grain from South Africa that, of South Africa, is a grain from West Africa, Senegal. Uh, fonio is high and nutritionally dense. I don't just focus on protein. I focus on nutritionally dense foods. Mm -hmm. Even sometimes I don't even eat cooked foods. And I love to mention about when I go into my raw vegan detoxing and, and, and journey because the body is a machine. And as you're working a machine and you work it overtime and you work it overtime, foods are not being pro um, properly broken down. And that can cause a lot, of phys uh, a lot of ailments, a lot of chronic illnesses and ailments because foods are not being pro um, processed very well. And then it leaves mm -hmm. a lot of toxic mucus in the body. When you're going through that, literally, you need to start fasting and detoxing. You need to restart the body. You need to flush out the inflammation. You need to flush out the parasites. You need to do these things. And what are your favorite ways of detoxing and cleansing? And what mm. benefits have you noticed from those? Oh, man. Oh, it's so many. But yeah. I, I love to go back to the story when I first figured out a um, raw vegan um, I just came back from a cruise last year and it was amazing. I had fun, you know, and I realized I had that voice that came into my head and it said, Scott, you need to fast and detox because something greater is coming. 
literally. And when I got that download, I said, okay, the next day, I went to get my watermelon. I went to get my seeded grapes. I went to get blueberries. Um, highly anti, you know, inflammatory foods, fruits and uh, herbs, vegetables and things of that nature. And when I, I did 21 days, I did 21 days raw. And it was the best feeling that I ever had. Of course, the, three, the first three days is going to be very rough because that's the withdrawal phase. I actually did a video of that on my Instagram and it went pretty viral because I was speaking to the people from a personal view where they can be, they, they can understand where I'm coming from. Because anytime you start something new, it becomes a little bit intimidating. Mm -hmm. You know, the first two or three days is not going to be the best because the body needs to filter and process all of the junk, the toxins, the parasites, the mucus. It needs to filter out. Yeah. It's there. And that so stuff, it affects us even pushing. more than we realize. Yeah. Yes, exactly. It's pushing whether, you know, there's mucus coming out of your, you know, your, your bodily fluids, your, you know, when you go to the bathroom and, and things of that nature, it needs to be flushed out. So how are you going to flush it out? H3O2, watermelon, mm -hmm. cucumbers, you know, those watery fruits, um, the vegetables, it, uh, it rebuilds the body, it rebuilds the, the muscle tissues, the herbs. You know, I love to talk about Casa Ara Sagrada. That's a, that is a like a parasite killer. Uh, black, uh, black walnut, black, walnut. black wormwood. Uh, what else? It, it's so many out there, mm -hmm. you know? But when you start to do these things, you are going to vibrate on a higher level that you never thought you can reach before. Once you get through that, that withdraw, the withdrawal phase, depending on the individual, for me, I think it was a third or fourth day. Mm -hmm. And then the ketosis uh, kicks in. You're going to have energy. You're going to feel so much better. First of all, you're going to restart your circadian rhythm. A lot of Americans are not getting enough sleep. And some people feel like because the chronic illnesses and chronic diseases are coming into them, they don't understand that not getting, a lack, or not getting enough sleep, that will destroy your immune system. I don't care how healthy you are. I don't care how many herbs you take. Th there comes a time that you need to rest. Mm -hmm. And you not just sleep. You need to get in that REM you need to get in that REM sleep. You need to be in bed at a certain time. Try to be in bed before 10 p.m. and then wake up around 4 a.m., 5 a.m. That's the healing hours. That's the healing hours. That's the healing yeah. hours. So when you go to bed at a certain time and you respect, respectfully go to that bed, uh, bed at a certain time in um, at a continuous rate, at a consistency rate, you're going to feel so much better. Mm -hmm. And your brain too, right? Oh, yeah. My mental health, yes. and I don't sleep consistently. It's a mess. It's a big difference, yes, right? Yes, yes. And I, I wonder like where you'd be today if you didn't do all this. Like imagine, because how <laughs> were you eating before you went vegan? And imagine you didn't take this path. I wonder where you'd be right now. Jillian, I'm from the Bronx, <laughs> New York. <laughs> yeah. Jillian, I'm from the Bronx, one of the most unhealthiest counties in the world. So growing up in the Bronx, you have pizza shops, you got liquor stores, you got bodegas, you got Chinese food, you got was pure MSG. Yeah. You have, you know, all these unhealthy options where I was surrounded by and many others were surrounded by. And we've become, we normalize insanity. Yeah, and we do. We do. We normalize insanity because we see it every single day. It becomes a stimulus into our brain like, okay, this is normal. But it's not supposed to be normal for us to be eating all these fried foods and processed foods and greasy foods and junk foods with all types of chemicals and, and, and things that can destroy our bodies. So I always give myself credit and I never look at myself being higher than another individual because I've been there. I can only tell my story. And growing up in the Bronx, I was surrounded by that. The Mickey D's, the Burger King, the Wendy's, you name it, I had it in <laughs> yeah. abundance. Yeah. Especially the dollar menu. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, I, I knew how to make a five dollar stretch. I used to get the three mick chickens with the 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 mix, the what is it? The mick the mick muffin. I don't yeah. even I, listen. Yeah, the mick muffin. <laughs> yeah. I used to get those. So I, I love to talk about those those humble beginnings because, you know, some people think you just wake up, you have a silver spoon in your mouth, you wake up, oh, you know, like, 
uh, uh, oh, mm-hmm. you were born this way or, you know, this information was given to you. Nothing was given to me. I had to do the, in, the, the research and I had to keep myself accountable and take the initiative in order to find the knowledge that I have today and continue to develop it in this current time. Yeah. So I was eating pretty crazy. <laughs> yeah. And when you first transitioned and got really healthy, was yeah. it an easy transition? Were you just like, I feel good. I want to stay on this. Or was it not very easy? No, it was not. It was honestly, it put me in a life, put me in a position where I needed to get better or nobody else was going to help me get better. And I refuse to be a victim any longer. I've been a victim before. Um, I'm tired of it. So when I injured myself in 2015 and the doctor trying to give me all type of painkillers, all types of, you know, uh, medicines that don't really work, you know, um, (laughs) you know, and when I was receiving those things, I came, I went into a really dark depression. And during my depression, I remember the doctor telling me I had inflammation, but didn't explain to me a breakdown like, okay, Scott, inflammation comes from drinking milk. Inflammation comes from eating processed foods. Inflammation comes from eating processed meats and meats. He didn't break it down to me. So good from one thing that I realized that I can retain information, I have a good memory. So I remember the doctor telling me about the inflammation and I just took out my phone, took out my iPad. I say, what is, what is this inflammation? I did it. I seen what came up and I was just like, wow, this is insane. I've been eating inflammation all my life. Wow. (laughs) And that's when things changed. That's when, well, I took nine months. See, people, you need to start taking a realistic approach when it comes to your health and wellness journey. You're not going to be like that guy that say, you know what, cold turkey, I'm I'm going to just throw everything out and and, and do what I have to do. (laughs) No. No, no, no. Everybody's a different individual. And because you're a different individual and you're an individual in the first place, we all have separate journeys. My journey will never be um, someone else's journey. It may be comparable in some kind of way, but it will never be the same, you know, the the, the same roots or the same steps or the same timeline. Mm -hmm. Everybody is different. So it took me nine months, nine months of researching, nine months of trying to get it into my head, like, okay, I'm about to go on this journey and I'm going to see what happens. Mm -hmm. You you know what I'm saying? Because I'm not going in, I'm not going in there saying like, oh yeah, this is going to work a thousand percent, but you never know until you try. Yeah. And once you gather more information, then you have more tools to cure the inflammation. And that's what I did within those nine months. And when I came back, I used to be in the modern industry. And when I came back, I started to incorporate the teachings of Dr. Sebi, Queen of Four, Dr. Layla Africa, and of course, many other um, uh, influential uh, leaders when it comes to plant-based and the vegan lifestyle, mm-hmm. or even Akaline as well, too. So I'm gathering information from all these different sources. Yeah. Now I put them all into one. And when I came back from Paris, I said, okay, the first month, I said the first month, the first week, let me try this plant-based vegan lifestyle. And I did it in the first week and it was like the best week of my life. Yeah. I felt so much better. That's like when I went raw. It was just the best I ever felt in life. I couldn't believe it. It's so huge. It's crazy because sometimes you see people like feeling depressed, feeling like crap, low energy, (laughs) eating crap. And you're just like, you can change that, right? Yes, you can. Yeah. And okay. So you know so much about health, right? You've learned so much over the years. You're so passionate about it. You embody it. What are maybe the three greatest things you've learned about health? The three greatest things about health. I would say the first one is when when you're healthy, you're happy. True. It's so simple when and so true. When you are healthy, you are happy. That is so true. I cannot stop smiling when I wake up in the morning. I know I have to make my uh, sarsaparilla tea and I have to make my sawasop leaf tea. And I, I mix it in with this, uh, the sea moss and the ginger. And uh, especially when I'm in fasting and detoxing mode, I'm, I'm the happiest. 
Because I know that what I'm doing is increasing my overall life and longevity. And that's important, right? Very important. And a lot of people ignore that and they just think, well, if anything happens, I can just fix it or I'll have. But Mm. then, you know, I know people that I'm close to in their 60s that are just possibly going to lose their life and they really care now, (sighs) now that it's happened, you know? Jillian, I lost my mother at the age of 59. Mm -hmm. So young. 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 As I'm here on this podcast, tomorrow I put my mom to rest. Wow, Scott. October 1st will be my mother's 60th birthday. Everything is closing in on me right now. It's a heavy burden, but I must carry it. And while I'm carrying the burden, I need to be transparent and I need to be as real as possible. Within, you know, having all of these heavy burdens and and, and the heavy mindset, right? We all need to start being more accountable for our health. You ask yourself, how bad do you want it? Are you willing to just eat these things for temporary enjoyment? Or are you ready to step into a life where it's going to increase your overall longevity and happiness? And I mean, it's important that we do the best we can to be as healthy as we can. So we yes. have the best chance to be around for those we love too, oh, right? Absolutely. It's like a part of the reason now at 42, I eat so clean is because I want to be around when my daughter's 30, 40, 50, yeah. you know, 60 even. And when she has kids, meet her kids and yes. their kids and yes. be there, right? Still being and, able to, you know, run with them. And be functional, them. not be have functional. people taking care of me, not be able to take care of myself yes. and my house and stuff. It's important. I think we really need to wake up. I think the world's just out of control how people are eating now. It's just like... It's insane. And it's insane. And the levels of cancer, like my daughters are in grade kindergarten and grade seven and like there's cancer hitting their schools now. Like mm. cancer's hitting people younger. It's crazy, right? My mother transitioned from stomach cancer. Wow. Sorry, Scott. Sorry. Sorry. I've seen it deteriorate her and break her down, and I wasn't realizing how severe it was. I didn't realize how severe it was. She did the chemo. Mm-hmm. I tried to recommend other things. Sour stop leaf, fasting, detoxing. Mom, we can destroy the tumors or the cancer cells. But she, you know, she chose that she wanted to do the chemo. And within her doing the chemotherapy, it actually caused more damage than good. So when I was in the hospital, the doctor was telling me these things like the organs were failing, the liver was failing, heart is failing. Uh, the lungs is failing. It was just an overall, like everything was just shutting down, deteriorating, breaking down right in front of me. They told me that the blood turned toxic. The blood turned acidic. There's alkaline, then there's acidic. Anything that's acidic, it burns. Mm-hmm. If the blood turns acidic, then that means blood blood flow is not being sufficient. Blood is the natural carrier of all the nutrients that go throughout the body. It doesn't strike me. There's there's not a day that doesn't go by that I don't think about that moment and everything that was said to me and it kind of replays in my mind and just like, (sighs) Jillian, I tried. Yeah, you tried. You tried tried your best. You did amazing. What else can you do, right? I tried. Yeah. Scott, you're amazing. And you had a great relationship with her. You tried. You did your best. What else? There's nothing else you could do. You know, and I just, you know, I, as I mentioned in this um, lovely podcast, I said that I, I came back from Jamaica yesterday from my retreat. My mother was supposed to come in that retreat. My mother was supposed to come in that retreat. Um, the sickness was too much. She was in the hospital. She couldn't walk. The blood clots literally started to inflame her body to the point that have off scary. Was, That's yeah. scary blood clots, eh? Yeah. And do you think with her, a lot of it was food, like how she ate in her life? Yeah. 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 
It, it was. These things just don't happen out of nowhere. Um, yeah. These things progress. True. You know, and 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 when it comes to progression, it's like, okay, what are you adding on towards the progression? Mm-hmm. The processed foods, the junk foods, the not sleeping, um, the, the many different factors. And then that's when, you know, the, the chronic illnesses and chronic diseases, it happens. It happens. You know, so... Wow. Yeah, so my mother was supposed to come to that retreat. Mm -hmm. She wasn't able to make the first one. And um, she was in the hospital. I used to just send her videos and send her photos like, Ma, look, look what I'm doing. Like, you know, because before I even thought about doing a retreat uh, and, and then I started to do it, you know, nobody was like really buying the tickets or anything like that. Like people inquired. And then I remember I was speaking to my mother and my mother spoke so much life into me. And she said, son, continue to promote it because this is something that's going to help people. And, you know, my mother was a spiritual woman, you know, trusting the Lord. And just just know that you're doing a lot of good and you're saving people's lives. And I remember I had a smile on my face. And then, then that's when I started to like really promote it, really promote it, really push it. And I sold out my first retreat um, in about a week or two weeks in June. And then my mother said, do another one. No way. Do another one. So she recommended me, hey, Scott, do another one. Well, now you're going to have to do another one one. and another one. And another one. Let's go, Scott. They look amazing. I watch your retreats on Instagram and they just look so high vibe. So (laughs) much fun. I want to come to one. Yes. Next year. Yeah, next year. And I know I asked you, so I know I asked you the three greatest things you learned about health. You said when you're happy. Any others? Because people might say, oh, "Oh, I want to know the other two. Oh, man, the, the other two is... Don't take your health for granted. You could be here today and gone tomorrow just like that. Do not take your health for granted. Some people are living, but they're living time bombs. You know, like a time bomb where you set a timer and you're just like one cheeseburger away from getting a heart attack. You're one hot dog away from catching a stroke. You're uh, one heart disease away or whatever the case may be from just eating that nasty processed uh, food, you are a time bomb waiting to explode. And once that explosion happens, there's no probability for, um, for survival per se. Some people just explode and explode. Great example, rest in peace to Fat Man Scoop. Rest in peace to Fat Man Scoop. One of a legendary MCs, one of the greatest hype mans ever in his lifetime. Died at the young age of 52. He died on that stage. He died on stage rapping because of poor health, poor choices, not not working out, not being accountable for self. We're not, I'm not gonna sit here and say, oh, he died of natural causes. I refuse. Mm -hmm. I am not the one. There are cause and effect in this lifetime. What you do in this present will determine your future. Mm -hmm. That's exactly it. What you do in this present time will determine your future. So I cannot sit here and be like, oh, this is natural causes. It's nothing natural about that. That is a progression. Remember I talk about progression? That is a progression and it's just getting out of control. Do you know how yes. many people I hear every day now getting diagnosed with cancer oh. and just all these things? It's like... It's the hottest thing right now. You know, it's a trend. Like, it's, yeah. it's the hottest thing. Right? Yes. No, it's devastating. Like, I, somebody very close to me has cancer and it's just, it's devastating. It, it really is. But people yeah. need to understand in order to break down that tumor, those cancerous cells, you need to starve them out. How do you starve them out? On an alkaline plant-based, anti-inflammatory lifestyle. Mm-hmm. I will say it till the cows come home. I don't, I've never seen anybody in my life that says, oh, I had an ailment. I had a chronic illness or chronic ailment. And all I did was ate meat. Where? Yeah. Show me. Yeah. Show me the files. <laughs> but no, no, for real. Like we're here, right? We're at the Jillian Berry, you know, Scott Brown is here. Show me the files. Yeah. Where are they? But I know a lot of people that were, that had cancer 
had chronic illnesses, had chronic pain, had chronic diseases. And once they started to switch their lifestyle up to a more plant-based, even alkaline, vegan lifestyle, whole plant-based, even when it comes to raw and juicing, let me tell you, I know. They saw the light. I know. I see you. You do see they a lot of stories. Light. Yeah. Yes. Even with stage four stuff, you see a lot Ooh. of people. I see a lot of real stories. I have Like crispy cancer, all kinds of other people too. Yeah. I have testimonies. I've helped people. I've helped people reverse a lot of things. I don't really say too much. Yeah. But I've helped a lot of people reverse a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Whether they comment on my YouTube channel or they reach out to me in a DM or whatever the case may be to, you know, uh, show love. And I really, really appreciate that. But I know that I am doing a great thing on this earth. I am not wasting my time because time is very much limited. Mm -hmm. Time was so is so limited. I seen it in front of my eyes. I was there for my mother's last breath. I had to make a decision. Me and my sister had to make the hardest decision that we ever had to make in life. Our time on this earth is limited. What you do in this time will determine your future and determine your legacy. So true. And I'm sure a lot of people watching, they might want to make some changes. They're oh. so inspired by you. They want to feel like you. They want to look like you. So what are some key herbs or things in your kitchen that mm. are like key to health? And what are you currently eating in a day? Let me la let me answer the last question because you said three things, right? For health. <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah we That's right. <laughs> we here. So the third one, mm -hmm. health is not just food. Health is your physical health, your mental health, and your spiritual health. The big three. That's why I like to call it the big three. My mental health is one of the most important things to me. Me too. Yeah. I would not allow anyone or anything or any stimulus, nothing to disturb my peace. If it happens, then I will find a way to revert it. I will find a way to rebuke it. I will find a way to, to take control of the narrative as much as possible. My mental health is so important to me. I need to continue to do things that increase my overall serotonin levels, which is the happy hormone. I need to start reading more books and more literature. Sometimes I need a little alone time. Sometimes I need to be around friends and, and, and do those things that makes me happy. My mental health, not my spiritual health. I understand that everybody not, does not have a spiritual foundation or a spiritual background. But for me personally, I believe in a higher power. I believe in the creator. I believe that we are not just here just to be here. Mm hmm I don't think happens things this happen just because it happens. So whatever your spirituality is, practice it. Learn it. Lean on it. My physical health, I work out. I don't work out. I train for life. Working out is temporary, but training lasts for a lifetime. You need to do your cardio. You need to lift some weights. You need to do some Pilates. You need to do whatever it is in order for you to feel much better in this lifetime. We were not put on this earth to be mediocre. No. No, the, um, the creator did not put us on this earth to just be lazy and, and have big bellies and be fat. And No, 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 that is a choice. I refuse to make that choice. I want to be the best version of myself until my last days on this earth. So what did I do? I improved my overall physical health as much as possible. And then that affects your mental health so much, right? Absolutely. I, listen, I'm trying to be a sexy grandpa. Yeah. <laughs> you <laughs> will be, Scott. I'm trying to be a sexy grandpa. I don't know about y'all. Yeah, listen, <laughs> You're man. You're there. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you don't even work out in the gym, right? You do. I don't even know how to pronounce it. Calisthenics, right? Calisthenics. I do everything. So you do mostly calisthenics, though, right? Like outside. And if somebody wants to get into that, any yeah. beginner advice? See, calisthenics breaks down all excuses. A lot of people come to me and like, oh, Scott, I want to get healthy, but I don't have a gym membership. <laughs> you don't need the gym. You become the gym. I love it. Yes. You become the gym. I just came back from Jamaica. I didn't have a gym, but guess what? I bought my rings with me, my gymnastic rings. I bought my resistant bands. I bought my skipping rope. And even if I didn't have those things, you have a floor. You could do push-ups. You could do jumping jacks. You could do high knees. You could do squats. You could do different variations of things. That li literally, you see how I name all those things? That breaks down any excuse that you would have saying like, oh, I, I don't know where to start. Mm -hmm. You start right where you are. 
So you can stay this fit without the gym. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Yes, I am the gym, Jillian. Yeah. I, I am the gym. I love that. This is Jim Scott Bernhardt. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> In any city, anywhere. Anywhere. Right? Yeah. I've been doing a lot of traveling this year. You I know, see. Thank, yeah. You know, thank God I've been doing a lot of traveling and, and things of that nature. And I keep myself so accountable. I bring my rings with me, my resistant bands. I bring everything. Sometimes I stay in hotels where they don't have gyms. Guess what? I'm in my hotel room. I'm doing my little push-ups. I'm doing like a little 50 down. So that's like, you know, 50 push-ups, take a little rest. Okay, 49. I do a little squats to add on to it. All of this is stimulating my body and breaking down those muscle fibers, muscle, uh, muscle tissues. And it's just as important we do this, right? And pay attention to our strength training, our cardio, yes. our physical, uh, as the food, right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. You want to build your skeletal mass. Okay. When I, remember I told you when I was in the wheelchair? Yeah, you did, yeah. The doctor said I need four to six weeks. Mm -hmm. The doctor literally looked me in the eyes and said, you're a strong, healthy young man. Because of your physical prowess, because of your bone structure, because of your muscles, I did not break my leg. I only had a very terrible sprain. Wow. Yeah. So imagine if I wasn't living the lifestyle that I live. Probably would have broke. Oh, yeah. For my lack of calcium, for my lack of essential minerals and nutrients. Oh, yeah, it would have snapped like a twig. Mm -hmm. But because of my lifestyle, because I keep myself accountable, because I'm so disciplined and I'm I'm rooted. You know when something is rooted mm -hmm. like a tree? I'm rooted in it. I was able to not break my leg and recover as quickly as I did. Wow, Scott. And so what are some of the keys? Like take us back to the herbs or the oh, yes. or what you eat in a day because people yes, yes, want to yes. know too. Right what now. I eat in a day. Um, right now. So this morning I had watermelon, ginger, and sea moss. Nice. Sea moss I, does a lot, right? Yes, it does. You know, sea moss does a lot for me because anything that comes from the sea is very nutritionally dense. The uh, moss attaches itself to the rock. The rock has many minerals. That's why sea moss has 92 out of the 102 minerals and bladder rack has all the minerals in it. Bladder rack is another form of ocean algae. So, of course, I love to have my scoop of sea moss. That's my multivitamin. A lot of people, they want to go to all these different um, vitamin shops and vitamin stores. You know, do you they want to get their multivitamin? I get my multivitamin from the sea, from the rock, from the, the, the minerals itself. So you see me have all this energy, you would have thought, oh, he, he, he ate a big breakfast. No. Sometimes in life, you would need to eat less in order to live more. That's why we fast and detox. So right now, I'm kind of in a fasted detox state because I haven't eaten any solid food. Mm -hmm. All I had was watermelon juice mixed in with my ginger and my sea moss, right? Another day, if I'm going to the gym or I feel uh, a, a little hungry, I love to make me some spelled pancakes. Mm -hmm. I nice. love me some spelled that pancakes. That sounds good. I, I, you know, and I like to fix it up with some date syrup with some hemp seeds and... I'll be I'll be whipping it, man, with some with some walnut butter. Like I I I love to, you know, indulge in cooking. I cook a lot. I love to cook, you know. So um I'll eat some spelt pancakes or I'll do something quick like a quinoa flakes, like mm. quinoa flakes nice. bowl, which I don't even eat oatmeal any longer. Um it's a personal choice of mine. It's nothing wrong with oatmeal. I'm like, you know, but <laughs> I like quinoa flakes much better, especially that quinoa is a part of the nine essential uh, ancient grains, mm -hmm. which is highly nutritionally dense. So I'll do some quinoa flakes. I'll put some um, cacao nibs in there. I'll put some uh, walnuts in there. I'll put some hemp seeds in there. Uh, I'm smiling so much because like, this makes me happy when I talk about health and wellness. Um, so that would be like, an example, you know? And then some days I just drink tea. Mm -hmm. wow. I just drink some soursop leaf tea. I'll drink some burdock root tea, which is really good for the blood. So anybody that has blood issues, you want to um, incorporate more uh, burdock root tea to increase your overall iron. Um, especially for anybody that's anemic, increase your um, overall iron with the burdock root tea. Um, Sarsaprilla, that's another um, blood cleanser as well too. Um, I would drink the Casara Sagrada, mm -hmm. which is uh, a detoxifier, a cleanser. Yeah. So, you know, when you wake up in the morning, you're supposed to have a bowel movement. Yeah. 
Exactly. And there's a lot of people that are out there that's not having sufficient bowel movement, so you're backed up with a lot of toxic waste. Just drink some um, uh, so Casara Sagrada, which is called the bitters. You know, I'm Jamaican, so we call it the bitters, mm -hmm. you know, because it's very bitter. But anything that's bitter is going to eliminate parasites. Anything that's bitter is going to eliminate candia, which is the white tongue out of the, the mouth. Um, anything that's bitter is going to help regulate your taste buds. See, people get trapped in this taste bud method. Oh, it tastes so good. It tastes so crunchy. It tastes this. Understand that it's not a taste for you. It's a taste for the parasites. So once you start drinking those bitters or you start drinking those herbs, you you don't even want certain things any longer. True. Because you, you crave what's in you, too. Yes. Right? You're craving what's in you. you once you get all that out of you and you get through all that and you get healthy, then you just crave the healthier foods and you're all good. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, Fruits in the morning. Ugh. Let me tell you something, family. There's no greater feeling than eating fruits in the morning. I left Jamaica yesterday. I had a soursop. So good. I love soursop, especially soursop in Jamaica, where you can just pick it from the tree. Yeah. It's, it's wild soursop. It's not being, you know, uh, contaminated with any pesticides. It's not being imported, exported, anything like that. This is a soursop that was grown and you just pick it and you eat it and you feel so good fruits in the morning is essential i agree it it is essential for the machine which is your body to detox and to feel much better and to gain those essential minerals and nutrients there's no better greater feeling i had a soursop i left jamaica um, my retreat, because, you know, I was having my retreat. Y'all should join me next year, 2025. Yeah, I'll put it down New year, below. New year, new me retreat. I'll talk about it um, much more later. But I had a sop, -sop mm -hmm. before I went to the airport. And as soon as I got to the airport and I see everybody eating the airport food and everything like that, I was not hungry. No, exactly. I was filled with so much nutrients. Yeah. I was filled with so... I, I felt very, like, satiated. Like, I was... I was good. Mm -hmm. I came home. Everybody's like, oh, Scott, you hungry? I'm like, no, mm -hmm. I'm not. I just drink some water. I just eat some fruits. Yeah. So, exactly. yeah, I keep it very simple. I don't like to complicate things. I just eat fruits. No, that's yeah. good. Well, this has been amazing, Scott. I love having you on. Our last podcast was so good, too. Yes, I'll put that at the end of this video on the screen so you guys can watch <laughs> it. And I'll put it down below. Yes, please. But um, any advice maybe to leave anybody off with? Maybe if they're going through a hard time struggling with grief or struggling with their health, like in a dark place. Any motivation, inspiration, or advice you want to leave them with? And also let everybody know where to find you. And I'll put it all down below. Yes. Um... Family, understand that suffering and grief is temporary, if you want it to be so. Turn the pain into passion. Whatever pain that you're feeling right now in this lifetime, turn it into your passion. Continue to do the things that made your loved ones happy. Continue to do the things that put a smile on their face. Continue to do the things that made them so elated and made them so proud. My mother was very proud of me. My mother loved to show me off. I love that. <laughs> she loved to show me off. Look what my son did, look what my did. Oh, you, you should watch this video of my son. So guess what? That's what I have to do, Jillian. Yeah. I have to continue to be a efficient content creator, be an efficient messenger of health and wellness, be the best host that I can be, be the best retreat host I can be, be the best son that I can be, even while she's not here. So I want you to do the same. I want you to be the best version of yourself while you're here on this earth. Because like I said before, time is limited. And what you do with that time will determine your legacy. So turn the grief into gratitude. Wow. I had to learn that. Powerful. Mm -hmm. I had to turn the grief into gratitude. What do, you, what do you mean by that, Scott? I'm grieving right now. Absolutely. Trust me, I am. I'm in so much pain. But the gratitude is... I honored my mother to the very last breath. The gratitude is I thank you, mom, for all of the wisdom, the encouragement, the long talks. You spoke life into me when I couldn't even speak life into myself. You seen things in me that I couldn't see into myself. I was very blinded, but you seen it. The gratitude, 
You see that? That's mm -hmm. gratitude. That's like, thank you. I love that. So turn the grief into gratitude, family. And understand that you can only, only you can make your suffering temporary. I love that, Scott. That's beautiful. I wow. speak from the heart. Jamie. Yeah, and look at your shirt, Mama Bernhard Legacy. Oh, you had that yes. made for your mom. Yes. I love it. Okay. This shirt, Mama Bernhard Legacy. This shirt means so much to me because I am my mother's legacy. I am my mother's only son. And yes, she has a daughter, but I am my mother's legacy. She lives within me. Dacia Angela Hewitt lives within me. So I wore the shirt when I hosted Vegan Dale 2024. My mother was at my first show of Vegan Dale. She was at my second show of Vegan Dale. The third one, she was there with me, but in spirit. So this shirt is a representation of the legacy of my mother and the legacy that I will continue to build on my own. Also in the back of the shirt, I have a picture of my family. Oh, no way. Yeah. Oh, I love that, Scott. Yeah, I have a picture of my family. That's um, so awesome. This was Mother's Day. Yeah. Um, this year. Oh my Sorry. God, that's so awesome. This was this was Mother's Day. Um, this past Mother's Day in 2024, we wow. took this photo as a family, and this photo will forever, ever be one of my favorites because it was. I'm sorry. Oh no. Oh no. Oh, to the. Oh, okay. There. Yeah, yeah. I need to. We're good. Yeah, I got you. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Actually, I do have a shirt. <laughs> I could bring it. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's good. We got it. Okay. We saw it. I could bring the shirt. I have the shirt. We saw it. Okay. Yeah, they got okay. it. Yes. So, wow. uh, um, yes, this shirt means a lot to me. Uh, this shirt was uh, made for me. Uh, shout out to my wonderful uh, girlfriend for making the shirt. And she made this shirt. And... It means so much to me because it has my family on there. It was one of my mother's last defining moments, especially for Mother's Day, to have us here all together at church celebrating. And yeah, I am my mother's legacy. Mama Bernhard for life. I yeah, love you and I miss you. I love it. You're amazing, Scott. Thank you. And your girlfriend. You didn't have a girlfriend last time we talked, I don't think. Is she plant-based too? Well, she, she she's... She's getting there. Yeah, she, yeah. that's good. Well, good. She's, I'm yeah. happy for you. You have a thank girlfriend. You. That's thank exciting. You. Thank you. Thank you. That's amazing. <laughs> well, this has been such a good talk. And thank you for being so open and so real, so honest. And yes. for all the inspiration. You're so inspiring. Thank you really you. inspire people to live healthier, happier lives and just become their best version. Absolutely. I love how you just strive to do everything super well. And it's just your role model. We can all look up to, even me. So thank you. And I'll put everything down below. All yes. Because you have amazing social media. Everybody go follow Scott, his Instagram. You have more energy. You're always in a different place all over the world yes, every day. Yes, and you're just yes. such an inspiration. So I'll put everything down below. Go join one of his retreats. Yes. Yeah, they're awesome. So family, come to the uh, Bernhard Wellness Retreat. This is a retreat that, this is something that means so much to me because of putting people in a space where people don't know each other, but putting them in a very common space. We're all here for health and wellness, right? Mm -hmm. We're here to experience Jamaica like they never experienced it before, right? And then from there, building on that and creating families and creating networks is so very important to me. So if you want to experience the island of Jamaica where I'm from, but experience it in a very authentic way, way where you're not just trapped in a resort and you know, no you're going to mm -hmm. be around nature you're going to be around fresh fruits you're going to be around herbs and not only that you're going to be educated on what herbs you need to use for what ailment that you have or what is it that you can do to be an asset towards your family and your friends so it's not just there okay we're in jamaica we're having a good time with jet skiing oh no this is a very <laughs> yeah. educational retreat yes we're gonna have our fun there's a balance, but we have many different workshops as well, too, on the retreat, whether you're into sound bath healing, whether you're into breath work. Of course, you get to work out with me, you know, with some calisthenics, with some dance cardio. It is a overall wellness experience that will add so much value into your life. Yeah, it's incredible. So much. Yeah. And I am just so happy to do this work because I know my mother is, is very much happy that I'm continuing to do this work. 
I cannot stop doing this work whatsoever. No. Because this is the work that saved people's lives. Exactly. Mm-hmm. My last retreat, I had so many beautiful testimonials. They were like, Scott, thank you so much for bringing us to this space. I didn't know about Sawasap. I didn't know about this herb. I didn't know about that herb. And you just made it so comfortable for us. You made it so personal for us. And when you see testimonials and when you see words like that, how could you stop? No, you can't. This is a this is my destiny. It is your, for sure, Scott. Oh, 100%. I will, listen, I will continue to honor my mother in everything that I do. So this retreat, I continue to honor my mother. I this love is not it. just about, you know, bringing people into Jamaica. No, this is a, a honoring my mother. I love that. So, yes, Beautiful. come. The next yeah. one will be June 10th to the 13th. 2025, the New okay. Year, New Me retreat. This year, I did my two. I'm done. And it, of course, in respects for my mother's transition, I need to take a, a, a break. Yeah. And then June, I said June, January 10 to the 13th, 2025, New Year, New Me retreat, hosted by Scott Bernhard, St. Mary, Jamaica, Vital Frequency Retreat. Okay. Be there. Because Amazing. It will sell out again. Trust yeah, me. It'll it, sell it out. Will. <laughs> for sure, without a doubt. So I'll put that down below. Yes. And we'll have to have you back to talk more about like the sound healing and the breathing and all yes. that stuff. Yeah. So everybody subscribe for that because we love having you on. We love coming to New York to interview you. Yes. So, and I'll put the podcast on the screen right now that we did last. I think mm-hmm. we did it about a year ago. It was incredible. So check that out. Go watch that right now. Grab a green juice. Go make a green juice and watch it. And we love you guys. We'll see you in the next one. Bye. It's never bye. See you later. (laughs) (laughs) Love y'all, man. Scott Bernhardt.